Good. So thank you for joining again this webinar. I'm seeing, well, we cannot see you, but that's, uh, that's okay. Um, uh, and um, I would like to welcome uh, welcome my colleagues. So my, my name is Fabien, Fabien Advani. I'm working at ID Quantic as a partner and sales development director. And with me, we have... Yeah, hello, my name is Thomas Lebert. I'm working for the COSO. I'm heading the systems consultants and post sales department for connectivity solution. And I've been over the last year recently focusing on developing tailored post quantum safe solutions. Good, perfect. So today we will be looking at the following quantum technology advances, how the data security situation changes, what you need to know about the quantum safe concepts, which solutions are currently available in the market, and what does a real life um, example look like? So um, before that, uh, I want just to have a little of housekeeping before, before we get started. If you have any questions during this presentation, please feel free to uh, type them in the box uh, in the GoToWebinar control panel. We will bring them up after the presentation and we will also have time for questions at the end of the session. And if you miss anything, don't worry, we will send you the on-demand recording when it's available. Also, at the end of the webinar, we'll have under the section handouts, uh, the document of this presentation and also some other reading that we, pre we prepared for you. So let's start. So I want to start this presentation with a, a bold statement from KPMG. Let me read that for you. So quantum computing is no longer, longer science fiction. It's a new paradigm that is redefining our understanding of computing power. Quantum computing will disrupt standard cybersecurity practices and have a profound impact across, across a range of industries, including defense, aerospace, and financial services. So you may you may ask yourself, what is quantum and why quantum is getting this kind of hype at some extent being important in this world? So it's clear that quantum technology is being as a disruptive technology in many ways, and the impact on business will be predominant. Nevertheless, leaders that they want their companies to be relevant tomorrow need to begin embedding quantum technology in their strategy planning as of today. So what is, so what the quantum technology and how this technology will help businesses and maybe government. So let me explain first, what is the quantum technology is all about. So quantum technology is a class of technology that works with, by using the principle of quantum mechanics that include quantum entanglement and quantum superposition. So this technology started around the phenomena of the quantum physics, specifically around qubits. Uh, I will get. I will not get into further detail here. Uh, this is not the objective of this presentation, but something very important to remember is that qubit through the quantum physics will enable us to solve problem in much fewer step and uh, at the faster speed and could process a set of complex data uh, accu uh, with accuracy, with a very good accuracy. So the quantum technology could be then used in various practical applications, such as quantum computing, quantum sensors, and quantum communication to, to name some of this, these applications. Quantum computers are believed to be quickly to solve certain problems that no classic computer could solve in any feasible amount of time. Quantum application may include finding new ways to model financial data, isolating key global risk factors to make better investment or funding 
the optimal path across global systems for ultra efficiency and optimization. So quantum computers are also best known for their expected ability to carry out Shor algorithm, which can be used to factorize large number, but also to break current cryptography systems. On the other hand, quantum secure communication are methods which are expected to be quantum safe, safe in the advent of quantum computer systems that could break cryptography. Usually these methods used within quantum communication rely on the quantum mechanics and are meant to be secure against quantum computer attacks on the encryption keys. So let's see what's going on outside this uh, outside this slide, basically. So there is a quantum race outside there. And the race has already started for some years ago. So across the globe, tech giants are building their own machines and speeding to make them available to the world as a cloud computing service. In the competition, we have IBM, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, to, to name some of them. And the newest to this is Honeywell. So the last one who joined this race is exactly Honeywell. And basically, Honeywell is a company that used to make home thermostats is now building a quantum computer. In beginning of March 2020, they stated that they have a big plans for the quantum future. They even announced that their quantum computer will be open for business within the next three months. With customers able to access it over the internet and to test it and to evaluate its process. So basically, the, the, the race will be long, very interesting. However, I do believe it will be beneficial for the human race and for the human, humanity in a way. So let's see what is going on over the world. So across the globe, we are seeing growing number of research centers, private sectors, initiatives, and government-backed quantum efforts. In Europe, for instance, there's a lot of stars startups that have recently raised money in the space in this space basically including the uk river lane in austria and even in finland one of the biggest european initiative is the open quickly toward quantum communication and the budget for the open quickly was around 17 million euro the project itself is to create protect the EU sensitive data and digital infrastructure for years to come. The US wants also to stay ahead of this game. A growing number of research center and companies across the US are increasing their investment in this field. And the US based tech giants are leading the way. Moreover, the US president has signed into law a bill that commits the government to provide 1.2 billion to fund activities promoting quantum information science for a period of five years. So it's clear that the quantum momentum is at high level with many promising advancements across the globe. But what will be then the risk and how the data security situation changes in that matter? So quantum computer, as you may know, can process the input of a calculation in parallel. It can therefore solve certain numerical problems much more efficiently than a classic process. We know that a quantum computer can factorize large number very efficiently. As the factorization problem is the basis of classic public key, cryptography, this will significantly fade many of the techniques that we have already and that we use today. So hackers are also likely to exploit quantum algorithms that optimize certain tasks. 
One such algorithm published by Groover in 96 helped quantum computers to search for possible permutation much faster. Another algorithm well known by 94 under the name Peter Shore helps quantum machines to find the primer factor of number incredibly fast. So in other words, Shore algorithm running on a quantum computer poses a risk to public key encryption systems such RSA, for instance. So popular cryptographic scheme based on these hard problems, including RSA and elliptic curve, will be easily broken by a quantum computer. This will rapidly accelerate the obsolescence of our currently deployed security systems and will have dramatically impact on any industry where information needs to be kept secure. A report on a quantum computing published last year by the US National Academy of Science, Engineering and Medicines predicted that a powerful quantum computer running Shore algorithm would be capable of cracking 1024-bit implementation of RSA in less than a day. So as I mentioned earlier, quantum computers are also best known for their expected uh, ability to carry out Shore algorithm, which can be used to factorize large number, but also to break current cryptography systems. For instance, Professor Mosca from the University of Waterloo strongly believe that a large scale adoption of quantum computer will be in between 2020 and 2025. He believes that by 2020, one by 2026, sorry, one in seven chance that the current crypto will be attacked by quantum computer running, for instance, Shore algorithm. Quantum computer attack on crypto will increase throughout the time. So by that time, it will be no longer possible to guarantee the integrity and authenticity of the transmitted data and information that we have. As tampered data will go undetected, from a business ethical and legal perspective, this will violate the regularity requirement for data pri privacy and security that are existent today. So the threat posed by future quantum computers still affected, affects the data today. The download now decrypt later attack factors vector mean that encrypted sensitive data can be downloaded today and analyzed offline when a quantum computer is adopted at a larger scale. So this value in time could be an important factor from a business, a competitive, or even governmental perspective. For instance, taking an example of the intellectual property data related to the pharma industry, this data have a value for a period that could range from 15 to 25 years. So data shared today over the the internet, for instance, is already harvested in large data centers. It may be decrypted later when a quantum computer is available. So any data with extended confidentiality requirement is already at risk. So what do you need to know about the quantum safe concept? So as I mentioned earlier in my previous slide, there is a pressing need to develop cryptography that will remain secure when large scale quantum computers became available. As mentioned by Deloitte in 2019, government and business leaders, even those in non-technical positions should have a basic understanding of quantum systems and the emerging security challenges so they can take steps to protect information and prepare their organization teams 
and business practices for the quantum world. So many organizations have already done that. The proactiveness not only ensures staff, customer, and asset to be protected, it also delivers a host of benefit for, from mitigating the risk of cybersecurity incidents to increase customer trust through forward-thinking innovation. For some decade ago, many researchers have started already working on methods to improve the security of software-based signature and key exchange method using quantum safe cryptography, which are method that should continue to be effective after the quantum computer are powerful enough to break existing public key cryptography. A number of solutions that are based on quantum physics and algorithms are already in operation. So which solutions are currently available in the market? So the first one, there is a concern that we know within the network communication that are encrypted using a classic public key cryptography that may be stored today and decrypted in the future. When more powerful processors or new method for crypto analysis are available. In contrast, quantum safe solutions should be resilient to all quantum computer advances in computing. So one of the solution to this and in the field of quantum physics is the quantum random number generator used to protect data and to enhance authentication. So the QNG produce truly random number thanks to the law of quantum physics. And without following the procedure of the computing algorithm that merely imitated randomness. Using a quantum random number generator as the foundation in generating keys for encryption and authentication is highly recommended. This could be done already today by integrating the currency in the current encryption and key management solution. A technology that exploits a principle of quantum physics through observation causes perturbation to exchange cryptographic keys over optical fiber network with provable security. And that is the quantum key distribution. So the QKD is used to generate two identical secure keys on the two end of the channel. A quantum random number generator is already embedded within the system itself to guarantee that the keys are produced in an absolute random way. Once the key exchange is validated, the keys can be used to encrypt and decrypt the data. So the QKD is one of the well-known cryptographic techniques which offer forward security resilient to new attack algorithm and upcoming quantum computers. Another solution based on algorithm and mathematics is known under the name of PQC, post-quantum cryptography, which refers to cryptographic algorithm, usually public key algorithm, that are supposed to be secure against an attack by a quantum computer. So post-quantum cryptography is all about preparing for the era of quantum computing by updating existing mathematical based algorithm and standard. So we covered so far the principle of quantum technology and the quantum safe security. So let's see what are the practical solutions that we have as of today from a quantum safe security perspective. So hello, Thomas here again. I will guide you now through the chapter of how does a real life example look like.
So first of all, we would like to have a look after implementing quantum safety in fiber-based networks, depending on network topologies. So quantum safe solutions are available to fit all kinds of network topologies, both quantum key distribution, as Fabian explained, as well as post-quantum cryptography are capable to deal with point-to-point -point and linear drop topologies. For longer distances, beyond 120 kilometers per fiber hop, quantum key distribution would need relay sites, also called trusted nodes. Even more complex topologies like hub and spoke, ring or mesh network topologies may be implemented with quantum key distribution or post-quantum cryptography, or with a combination of both. Quantum safe solutions are available to fit all kinds of network topologies. A brief overview of the individual strengths of quantum key distribution and post-quantum cryptography is shown within the next slide. So this slide focuses on the best of both worlds, comparing with an overview to get a better understanding about the speed, sweet spot of each technology and the advantage in combining both of them. In terms of the technical implementation, the two technologies differ concerning their individual strengths. So what are the main differences? As Fabian already mentioned, quantum key distribution is based on quantum physics. It's a physical procedure that is done there. Post-quantum cryptography is a mathematical algorithm and implemented in software. So we're looking now on this chart in the comparison. There's some uh, red, yellow, green light system. And I will uh, first focus on the theoretical safety. So quantum key distribution is based on an operation principle which is 100% safe according to information theory. That means there is a mathematical proof for the safety of quantum key distribution. On the other hand, post-quantum cryptography is a key exchange algorithm based on complex mathematical functions and may stay a target for quantum attacks also in future. If we compare the implementation strength or implementation security, both solutions may be attacked by physical means to put the solution into unsafe operation to break in. Post-quantum cryptography comes with a higher resilience against such attacks. In terms of future proofness, quantum key distribution is robust against any large scale quantum computer attacks as it is based on physics and therefore not target for computing. In terms of the user awareness, in case of attacks, quantum key distribution is agnostic towards any interference happening on the quantum channel fiber. The key will be destroyed and the system would raise an alarm immediately. On the other hand, breaking into a post-quantum cryptography algorithm may even happen offline and may remain unrecognized by the user. So the advantage of the respective technology therefore comes into strong play when the two are combined. And this is shown on the right side of the chart where we see all greens in combining both technologies. When we're looking on the distance between nodes as already mentioned, implementing post-quantum cryptography is independent from network topologies while quantum key distribution has some reach limitations today. The best fit for bigger networks, therefore, would be combining quantum key distribution for regio and metro applications with post-quantum cryptography for long haul links. So combining both technologies in the right way leads to the most proficient solution to ensure data integrity for the layer one transport. So let's have a look about the solution in the past. 
which was based on public-private key exchange. Over the last decade, data encryption DWDM systems gained a lot of momentum triggered by the growing number of attacks. Solutions have been based on public-private key exchange technology, which is becoming vulnerable through quantum attacks now. As already mentioned, today's data integrity is on risk based on the assumption that data may be downloaded now, but decrypted in future. So what is the real case to safeguard mission critical data today? So the real case today, as it is already deployed by customers, is shown right here. It is combining current public-private key exchange together with quantum key distribution. Within the DWDM system, the keys are combined to ensure quantum safety for the data transmission. Dacoso is experienced and skilled in design, installation and implementation of quantum safe solutions based as shown here on the Atva FSP3000 DWDM family together with IDEQUANTIC's Cerberus platform. Within our demo lab, in our headquarters in Frankfurt, we are able to display functionality, show interworking, and perform system testing. Our teams are fully enabled as they did already customer installations, and we are currently undergoing proof of concept duties with new prospects. We help our customers in designing, implementing, and operating quantum safe technology and provide 24 7 on site support maintenance. As an alternative, we are able to operate a network out of our own network and security operations center and provide quantum safe bandwidth as a managed service for our customers. So, quantum key distribution ensures quantum safe encryption already today. It is up and running. So what's about a step ahead? So let's take a look into the short and midterm evolution, what's on for the future. So Atva is just releasing the first crypto transponder supporting post-quantum cryptography on a 100G plus transport bandwidth level. The key exchange is based on a lattice-based crypto algorithm and therefore robust, as we have explained before, against quantum computing attacks. This next step in 100G plus technology introduces higher flexibility, choosing a connectivity solution based on post-quantum cryptography or quantum key distribution. And this is also available now with the second half of this year. So the question is, what is next midterm? A combination of both of post-quantum cryptography and quantum key distribution may be expected to be available within the next 18 months. And then we are exactly what the slide is going to show. This will maximize data security in DWDM connectivity solutions. Dacoso, Idequantic, and Atva keeping technology leadership here. So the journey towards quantum safe data security has already started. So exactly, thank you, Thomas. So basically with this last slide, we want to conclude on something which is very important. So uh, we uh, outlined some four bullet points basically. Uh, so the first one is, it's very important to know the crypto asset that the companies are using right now. And that includes the algorithm that has, is in, installed and is in use, the length of the keys, uh, for instance, what kind of, um, uh, how many algorithm are used in. So the idea is basically to have an assessment uh, on the cryptographic tools that has been used within the company itself. And that will give a really good overview on what, what is the, the level of security and what are the techniques that are used within the company itself. 
The second point is to th think agile. What we mean with that is if today you decided basically as a company to buy a piece of hardware uh, for the encryption to encrypt some links, think agile and think that this hardware may need to be upgraded, may need to be software updated, uh, especially keeping in mind that the quantum computer will be here, is already here, and there's a lot of things that need to be managed after you already bought your hardware. So there's a need to think about what you are buying from a hardware perspective, from a solution, from an encryption perspective, to keep these kind of solution open for software upgrade easily, and even from a hardware upgrade perspective. The, the third point is one size do not fit them all. So the solution that you will take and implement within the company basically need to, to be adapted, adapted to the case, adapted to the data. We mentioned this, we mentioned that for, for, for in previous slides, the data have some value. So you need to assess the data and the value of the data. And based on this, basically you can put in, uh, uh, you can put in place a solution that will fit that kind of level of security of the data that you are wishing to protect. Hybrid system can improve security for sensitive data. And this mixing uh, one technique with another technique in order to combine them and to have the absolute uh, level of security within the two techniques combined us together. Yeah, and I'm jumping on the fourth bullet point here. Uh, as you may figure out now, and as I mentioned, technology is ready. So uh, as described, uh, we have already implemented uh, quantum safe solutions combining Atva DWDM with IDEQUANTIC's uh, Cerberus platform. First customer installations are up and running. We have uh, even these systems under maintenance. So the solution is available now. It's available off the shelf, it can be planned, it can be designed, it can be configured, installed, set into operation, and in a stable way being operated. So that's the resume from my side.